In this video, we're going to learn how to return multiple values from a function in C++. Now, technically, in C++, we can only return one value from a function. But there's many different approaches we can use to get around this limitation. Some of these approaches depend on the version of C++ that we're using. Now, in C++ 11 onwards, there's something called a tuple. And a tuple is a good modern way to return multiple values from a function. So we'll first go over an approach that uses tuple objects. Up here, we'll include the tuple library so we can create and use tuple objects. Now tuple objects can store a fixed number of values of different types. So for example, we could create a function which has a tuple return type, and that tuple could store two int values. We could have here tuple and then int and int. And this here is saying the function is going to return a tuple object and the tuple object is going to store two int values. We'll call the function tuple return and the function is going to accept as arguments two int values. We'll have here int a and int b. And we'll have the function return a tuple containing the sum and difference of these two values. So here we'll have return, and we'll call make tuple, and we'll pass it a plus b and a minus b. This is going to return a tuple object, and that tuple object is going to store the ints a plus b and a minus b. Then down here in main, we could call our tuple return function. We'll declare two variables we'll have int x is equal to, let's say 10, and int y is equal to six. We'll pass these variables to the function tuple return. And we'll declare variables total and difference to store the two values that are returned. So we'll have here int total and int difference. Then we'll call tuple return and we'll pass it x and y. Now the function tuple return is going to return a tuple. What we want to do is store the sum into the variable total and the difference into the variable difference. To do this, we need to unpack the tuple. We can do that here with TIE and we'll pass it total and difference and we'll assign the results of calling tuple return to this. What this will do is unpack the tuple and the sum is going to be stored into total, and the difference is going to be stored into difference. We could output these to confirm that. Down here, we'll output the total with C out total colon, and we'll have total, followed by an end line, and we can output the difference with C out and difference colon, and we'll have difference, followed by an end line. Then, if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll get a total of 16 and a difference of four, both of which are correct. Right now, the tuple that's being returned is only storing int values, but a tuple can store different types of data. So for example, our tuple could also store a string. Here we could have comma string, and then here we could return a string with comma, and we'll have return string. Then down here, we could declare a variable to store the string. We could have string, and R-E-T-S-T-R. Then we could also unpack that string and store it into R-E-T-S-T-R. And we could output the string with C out and return string colon. And then we'll output R-E-T-S-T-R followed by an end line. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll see our function has now returned a string as well. Now in C++17, which is an even newer version of the language, we could unpack the tuple using a feature called structured bindings. So here we could have auto and then open square bracket and then over here, close square bracket. We could also return the tuple in a different way. So instead of using make tuple, we could just have open curly brace and close curly brace. And this is another way of creating a tuple that we're going to return. Then down here with this auto keyword, 
the types of total difference and RET STR are going to be figured out by the compiler. If we save compile and run the program, we'll get the same result as before in terms of the total difference and return string. Now, when we return a tuple from a function, we're still really only returning one thing, the tuple. But because the tuple stores multiple values, we can say that we're using the tuple to effectively return more than one value from the function. With a tuple, we can store a fixed number of values. Those values can be of different types, but there's a fixed number of values. A similar approach to achieve this effect would be to use a struct. Another approach, if we want to return an unknown number of values of the same type, is to return a vector. Let's try that. Up here, we'll include the vector library. Then down here, we'll make a function that's going to return a vector of ints. We'll have here vector open angle bracket int and close angle bracket. So this function is going to return a vector that's going to store int values. We'll call the function vector return. And inside the function, we'll declare a vector called numbers that's going to store ints. We'll add to this vector the values one, two, and three. We'll have numbers.pushback one, and we'll have numbers.pushback, and we'll have two, and numbers.pushback, and we'll have three. Then we'll return this vector from the function and we could have stored any number of ints into this vector. Then down here, we'll call the function. We'll declare a vector to store int values and we'll have returned vector for the name of the vector. We'll call the function vector return. So this function is going to return a vector and return vector is going to store that vector. And then we'll loop through the vector and output the ints. We'll have here for int value colon returned vector, and we'll output each int value returned in the vector. We'll have output the value followed by an end line. And if we save compile and run the program, we'll get the three values here, one, two, and three. And so we could effectively return any number of int values from the function by storing them into that vector. Another approach to effectively return multiple values from a function is to use what's called pass by reference, where we have reference variables for function parameters. So for example, we could have here void and we'll have pass by reference as the function name. So the function is not going to return anything in the typical way. That's what it means when a function has a void return type but this function is going to have two reference variable parameters. So we'll have here int a and int b. And as before, this function is going to return the sum of a plus b and the difference a minus b. So these parameters are like inputs. Then we'll have two reference variable parameters. We'll have int and and sum and int and and diff. And diff and sum are essentially going to be the outputs from this function. What we'll do is assign to sum the result of a plus b, and we'll assign to diff the result of a minus b. Now, reference variables act as aliases for other variables. So whatever variables we pass in from main, the values of those variables are actually going to be modified by these assignment operations here. So we can use reference variables to effectively return multiple values from the function. Let's call this function. Down here, we'll declare variables total and difference as type int again. So we'll have int total and int difference. And we'll call the function pass by reference we'll pass it x, y, and total, and difference. Then down here, we'll output total and difference. And we'll delete this as well. 
and if we save compile and run the program, we'll get a total of 16 and a difference of four, which is correct. Now, when we did this, total and sum are really the same variable and difference and diff are really the same variable. So when we modified sum and diff inside the function, we also modified total and difference in main. So when we have reference variables as parameters, we call this pass by reference or call by reference. And this allows us to modify multiple variables in the calling function, which is another approach to essentially return multiple values from a function. Notably, this approach will work in older versions of the C++ language. Now, one thing that could be confusing about this approach is that we're using function parameters for both function input values and function output values. And that's in contrast to the other approaches where we used function parameters for function input values and the return value for the function output values. This approach could be more confusing by mixing together the input values and output values as parameters. Now there is another similar approach we could use called pass by pointer. I'll post a link in the video description to that approach, as well as the approach of using structs and some other approaches too. So this is how we can return multiple values from a function in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.